Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Um, just a second. I'm just checking the recording is fine with the sound and video. Sasha, do so much. Okay, so uh, the topic of my workshop. Can you close the door? The topic of my workshop is uh, Church Growth Strategy or Connecting the Dots. Why I gave this PowerPoint or this workshop this name? Uh, you were observing Embassy of God Church, you were watching some ministries, you were watching how people testify about their movements, results that we have, and you have observed the, the size of that Embassy Church, especially a few years ago, it was a big church with a multitude of ministries at uh, multi, no, like, thousands of uh, people in the church. And um, I want us to summarize for you to for you to know, for you to understand what are the. Uh -huh, okay, we don't have uh, we don't have. Uh, we don't have statistics, but I will, sh I will tell you the statistics of the church. Oh, if you allow me, I will take two minutes to get the statistics for you. So I think these slides are a little bit wrong. Sorry for this interruption. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would like us to look at statistics of that embassy church, and we will later discover why all these figures became possible. So, when we were celebrating the 20th anniversary of Embassy of God Church, uh, Pastor uh, gave us assignment to, you know, to put all figures down, to calculate how many churches do we have, what kind of impact Embassy of God Church has. And uh, uh, they were able to calculate can you turn off the light? Yeah. Just try, try. No. One of them. The other. No, it's very evident. Talk a presentation, yeah. So, so either you see the slides or people will see me on the screen. What do you want? They are seeing you. They need to see the slides. Normal. Okay, so let me start with church. They were taking statistics uh, at some points for the five, for the past. Eight years. So, Embassy of God Church is over one million people saved in the first eight years. Over one thousand churches planted in over fifty countries, and three thousand leaders ministering in only Kiev Church. Then, uh, that one thousand churches is divided into two types of churches: classical churches and social churches. And among those one thousand churches, uh, the Embassy Church has 657 classical churches all over the world. And you see 
the number of churches in Ukraine, Russia, Africa, Asia, Europe, Belarus, USA, and Canada. Then, uh, Embassy of that church has uh, 644 social churches all over the world, and most of them are definitely in Ukraine. Then Russia, then USA, Europe, China, and Belarus. That Embassy Church has 235 educational centers. Uh, among them, Ukraine has 200 educational centers, Russia has 14, etc. So, uh, you, uh, the Embassy Church also has a structure of educational centers. Educational centers is, uh, uh, let's say, it is Joshua Bible School, uh, different classes for, um, for financial literacy, computer literacy, some, some educational centers for adults, educational centers for kids, um, what, what else we have? Different language courses that uh, or were organized by members of the Embassy Church. And this is the split of people in local churches. Uh, just statistics. Embassy of that church also has uh, 15 services held weekly. In, in Kiev alone, then uh, about 1,000 people were saved monthly in the Embassy of God Kiev Church alone. Then uh, there are homes for homeless and abandoned children, and uh, over five, 500 children have been reunited to their families. So we remember the presentation of orphanage that we attended on Monday. So only that house helped to 250 children and there are different other different organizations that help and added uh, another 200 to this figure 250 sorry to this figure and uh, statistics says that over 70 million people saved in 20 years in not only in ukraine but all over the world they, uh, when pastor sunday was preaching all in different conferences they took these statistics so this is general reach uh, of uh, embassy of that church and uh, Embassy of God Church counted 200, oh, sorry, 142,000 members, members worldwide. Uh, and we had over 700 non-government organizations. And most of them, I would say, 90% of them were in Ukraine alone. Because uh, there was a time when we started a movement of uh, raising NGO leaders. And through NGOs, we had a tremendous influence. Embassy of God Church has such uh, social projects like Stefania Soup Kitchen where they feed thousands of um, people daily and this, this soup and kitchen was uh, like later it was in the center, like almost in the center of the city in the big uh, abundant area but uh, now they have relocated to, s to some other place then um, uh, we have Re uh, Rehabilitation Center Love and generally we have a net of rehabilitation centers that were up to 200 and for the past 10 years they helped uh, to over 10,000 people to get freedom from drugs and alcohol addiction. And from previous slides, if you analyze it, you will see that uh, Embassy of that Church had influence in these main seven areas is economics, education, sports, culture, politics, uh, social and spiritual, sphere of life, and media. Uh, over a million people are reached yearly through Embassy of God churches, and this is how the outreach is divided between countries. And here is church growth strategy. This, uh, I want to say that this PowerPoint is my personal observation. So, uh, being a member of this church for over 16 years, um, I, was able, I was able to track how things are done in the church. And sometimes we have a lot of visitors, workshop uh, presenters, that say about their projects, but um, I noticed that sometimes it may not uh, come into one big puzzle for like, how these projects are connected with church growth. And you are here because you want to find yourself, you want to find your place in life, you want to find your mission in life, and it will automatically means that you are going to do something in the church or outside the church. And 
these figures that I showed you, you may have noticed that there, are, uh, there is a division. Uh, 60, almost 60% 60 are classical churches and 40% in, in the quantity are social churches. It says that 40% of social churches give, uh, let's say, they uh, fill in or uh, they pro provide people for classical churches. So social churches by number are less, but the conversion um, conversion tools in social churches are effective enough to you know to bring people to classical churches. So uh, the main con concept of social church and actually, um, what is the church? You remember Pastor Sunday uh, yesterday? He he gave the reasons uh, why people go to MSF that church. Remember, he said that they have done a special uh, questionnaire where they ask, "Why do you go to church?" What was the the number one answer for for over half of the people? What was the answer? Who can remember? Yes. So church met people's needs. Church solved people's problems, and um, this is the main purpose for social churches. The main purpose for social, social churches is to see a need in the society and help to solve it. So my observation is that Embassy of God Church uh, became successful due to ability of pastors and leaders to see a need in the society and find a solution to this need and then build a system of actions on how to identify a need and how to solve the need and how to make this scalable, how to multiply this process. So, yeah, how this, how this uh, chart is, uh, should be explained. Uh, social churches, they work on outreach, they, they work, uh, their main work is outreach to people and uh, finding problems and solving problems for the society and for, for people. Then uh, people from social church, I will tell you later how, how it happens, from social church people come to classical churches. In classical churches people are trained like you, like everyone who attends classical church. We are trained to become leaders, we are trained to become pastors, we are trained to go out of church walls and we become a church, social church leaders. And, in social ch and, and from social churches this process starts again. We bring people to classical church, classical church trains leaders and this multiplication goes on and on and on. So, uh, I call this, uh, for us to understand it more easily, I call this uh, process a church funnel. You know what a funnel is in, in business. If, you, if you're working in marketing, you know what a funnel is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is this the right word? Is this correct mm -hmm. uh, I mean, interpretation? Yeah, so this red square, it is red, believe me. Is, uh, is social church. Yeah. Social church is an in intermediary between society and classical church. Yeah. And depending on how effectively these elements are designed, the more people will come from society to classical church. Yeah. I will send this PowerPoint so you may not uh, oh. photograph. Oh. You will have these slides, yeah. But you you can write down your notes, yeah. and you may you may you know prepare your questions or just think on how it is applicable to your areas. Yeah. You will have these slides. It's it is easily available. Yeah. So uh, the way we build this uh, structure. It's different, and it, it is uh, it is unique to every specific area of life 
or it is unique to every specific um, social problem. But uh, my observation is that this, uh, this system has three main elements. Is the element of outreach. So how do we find those people? Secondly is the, the core of social church. What exactly we are doing there? What problems do we solve and how are we solving these problems? And third, uh, third element is uh, a set of conversion methods. So it, it means literally how do we tell these people that we are the church and all they receive is, is from God and we like how do we tell them about the church? How do we bring them to church? So uh, these three key elements uh, I would like to explain on the next slide. So now this, this red square is magnified. Now everything is in red. So the system of the system of outreach. Uh, as I told you, uh, social churches are built on are built to tackle different problems in the society, and society has uh, has sectors uh, or different kinds of people are in the society, and uh, or different categories of people are in the society, and every category has its own needs and has its own problems that we as a church have solution for. Let's say family couples. We know how to outreach to family couples, yeah? And we know which problems they may have. New families, uh, or like those who are just planning to make a family, or existing families. All of them, they have problems, situations where they need counseling. Not, not only problems, but uh, I'm not kind of, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not so pessimistic to say that everyone has problems, but people yeah, need counseling, people need improvement for their life, people maybe think that they don't have problems, but uh, you know, something is wrong in their life. But anyway, uh, I, I, I'm, I want to avoid pessimistic uh, vocabulary, but sometimes we have to use the word problems. So, we have another category, children, you know, they have their uh, challenges. Then students, workers, crisis families, uh, different communities and others. So, you, you name your category of people that you are working with or that you see that it is in your heart. Let's say, um, Irina, the director of uh, orphanage, yeah, she saw her audience, it is children, homeless children, you know, and crisis families. So they went directly to this, uh, to, the, to the places where these children were located. Or they worked with uh, social services, um, you know, authorities of Ukraine that deal directly with crisis families. And from that, uh, Irina told in her presentation that um, these uh, social services, they send children to their orphanages, right? Mm -hmm. So, this is the way how we outreach to the society. And there should be, you know, you can develop a strategy for every sphere. Once you know your sphere, once you know the, your target audience, you can develop an approach or you can develop ways on how to reach them. Secondly, uh, what do you offer? What do you offer them? What solutions do you offer uh, to your target audience? Let's say, if this is family couples, uh, new families or existing families. In God Embassy Church, we have different projects and you will see a, a list of these projects in the end of this slide, but uh, this is the name. We have a special course for family couples um, which is called Anatomy of Marriage, or Marriage Anatomy, where uh, trained teachers, they teach on how to build family, what to expect from your husband, what to expect from your wife, how to find a right spouse, how to manage family budget, 
you know, how to do, uh, how to make a proposal, how to make everything right, how to live before you get married, you know, how to keep yourself in holiness, etc., etc., etc. So many uh, topics are taught here. Uh, I, I will tell about these topics later. Secondly, we have fatherhood center. It also solves a need for the society. And let's say this fatherhood center is for there is no man, but okay, for for men. Then school of life. School of life is a special project in God Embassy Church that has ministers, that has people, uh, that has uh, specially trained youth that goes to schools and they speak, they teach uh, about uh, living a pure life for teenagers, talking to them on their language, living a pure life, uh, how to avoid uh, drinking, smoking, taking drugs. So they, you know, they do these uh, prophylactical uh, meetings and they save children from drugs. Many, uh, they, they have many testimonies when children at schools, they really change their mindset and they say, oh really, I shouldn't do that or I should stop uh, you know, doing what I was doing and I better uh, go for another like, educational program rather than hanging out with uh, those friends who, you know, who give me a dream or with whom I smoke so rehabilitation centers uh, also is this kind of solution the meditation center is also a social church. It is a place where uh, it is a place where destinies are transformed. It is a place where people are changed. It is a place where people are later attached to Christ and to church. Then uh, a set of angels. Uh, as I told you, we had we have uh, or we had over 700 angels, and all these angels they were set to solve different. Uh, different challenges in the society. Uh, for example, uh, example I told you in uh, in fatherhood center, there was one NGO that stopped sales of particular drugs in Ukraine. That was very poisonous and that was sold openly. Like anyone could go to a drugstore and buy these drugs. So there was an NGO that sold this issue. Now uh, we have NGOs, a number of NGOs uh, that. Uh, they take majority. Uh, they take majority in uh, in social councils. You know, uh, our government system has uh, a system of social councils where uh, NGO people or NGO representatives can apply and create a consultative uh, body under every government uh, government uh, institution. Mm -hmm. And this consultative body has a right to propose different uh, laws and has a right to control how this or that government institution uh, accomplishes its goals or its missions how are they reporting to the to the nation of Ukraine how are they fulfilling their function and if something is wrong they have a right to you know to, to raise a voice and make them work properly I think some of you are sleepy and really tired maybe we should open windows right mm -hmm. Or is it? Yeah, to, to have more hands. Okay. Can you open this, these windows and doors? Yes. Some persons pointed out complaining of the volume. It seems your voice is not loud. Not loud? No. Yeah, from the back? Maybe it is too loud. No, no, they are very loud. Not loud. The volume is too low. Too low. Okay. So they have adjusted it. So those who are watching us, please leave your comments and yeah. Thank you for proper feedback. So we have a set of solutions in this system. Once we uh, invited people from the society into our social church, the blue set is a social church, so the concept, the core of social church. So once we invited people here, we offer them different solutions. It can be your project, you, you name it. I mean, uh, children's ministry or ministry for t 
teenagers or I don't know if, if somebody works with businessmen or business people you have your own club for business people so it can be something like uh, here or here Poli political influence if you work with politicians and if you have an agenda to influence your society through uh, or by uh, adopting different laws that will solve different problems so you offer them cooperation and you offer them solution here let's say yeah the, the best example is rehabilitation center someone who has drug addiction they don't come to church but they come to a place where where they receive redemp where they receive a solution of their needs where they receive a, um, delivery from from that addiction and then there is a stage when person is fine his problems are say, uh, solved and uh, he needs to go through a process of repentance and this is one of the compulsory element of uh, social church is social repentance for example how do they do it uh, social repentance I will explain how it works um, the best illustration is uh, anatomy of marriage school we, uh, we invite people from uh, from the world you know everybody comes just to just uh, just for advertising where we say uh, do you have problems do you have problems in family we will show you how to solve them and it's a good place like nice place it's can, it can be either a restaurant or a conference hall that we hire or that NGO hires and people come it's a beautiful place so when when people have just came the leader the main speaker he says okay we welcome you here uh, in this gathering in this seminar uh, to make this uh, seminar more effective I just want you to forget about all troubles that you had you know leave all your problems leave all your job all your situations in life so let us let us keep calm let us keep focused let us just close our eyes and think about something positive let us think about higher source of energy uh, let us think about God and you can talk to God you can ask him to heal your needs to heal your wounds you can ask him to come into your life and you know this is kind of element of uh, prayer when people are talking to God when they ask God to come into their life so the person says like talk to God ask him to enter your life ask him to heal your wounds ask him to or oh, pray for your parents uh, pray for your relatives so just talk to God just relax this will help you to relax and get tuned into what we are going to do now okay so once we finished he sees that everyone is more relaxed etc et okay so now we're going to start our uh, our topic or our meeting etc so it is kind of soft uh, element of social repentance where uh, where they where we tell them that everything we do is based on God's word everything we, we do is based on um, principles that we take from the Bible principles of kingdom etc so every uh, every solution every institution uh, that we have in uh, social churches is uh, is instilled with the uh, principles that that we are taught you know that we are taught that we received from the church so uh, there should be social repentance everywhere if if this is a Sunday school for for children or you know some classes for children uh, teachers are also often using uh, different uh, songs different uh, poems that glorify God they teach them based on biblical um, biblical illustrations uh, biblical examples so they are always speaking about God or if not directly about God but they are speaking about kingdom principles they teach them if this is a ministry for children they speak about respect to their parents honoring others uh, being uh, truthful uh, being loving you know so all is instilled with the um, principles of kingdom of God and biblical teaching then uh, one element was social repentance I have just explained it second element is values and spiritual growth 
once we solve people's needs, uh, they are fine and they are open for communication. And uh, there are a lot of testimonies that people who came to this kind of social churches, they began to receive those values. You know, they are in, this, in the community that has some values and they are sharing their values. Let's say the anatomy of marriage school. Uh, we teach them that you should, you should be loving, you should, uh, you know, the, the qualities of love. It is uh, long suffering, it is patient, etc., etc., etc. And they realize, they have testimonies. Okay, I became patient, I became loving, I have, my, my values have, my value system has been changed. And <clears throat> when we substitute the value system with values of kingdom of God, they are becoming new personalities. And this is very important. Let's say in rehabilitation, uh, he was a criminal, he was, you know, alcohol addict, he was, uh, he was abusing his children and wife, etc. But after some time, after two or three months, he, he observes that people around him, they don't abuse each other, they love each other, they are caring, they, they are covering each other with love, uh, they are supportive, etc. And he begins to receive these values. He begins to support uh, his neighbor, you know, he is praying for his neighbor, and his personality is changing totally. So there is a stage where values of a person are changing. And with changing of values, there comes a spiritual growth, because once our values are changed, we begin to grow spiritually, because uh, we show them that, you know, there is a different system of values. And the first value is God, is your personal relationship with God. So uh, to set up personal relationship with God, you, you need to have spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is your personal walk with God, is your prayer, is, uh, is how you communicate with God, etc. So there is a particular stage of uh, spiritual growth. And we are still not in the church. You know, we're still in classical church, or oh, not, in, not, not in classical church, but we're still in social church. Yeah, so uh, we tell them about all we have. We give them values. We give them uh, directions for spiritual growth. Because sometimes uh, in, in different uh, situations, we work with people who are not very friendly to Protestant churches. Because here in Ukraine, we have a different type of uh, uh, mindset. You know, everyone, oh, most of the population is very traditional. They have used to seeing uh, Orthodox Church, which is a big uh, building with uh, golden domes, you know, with uh, icons, with uh, popes, with crosses, with these rituals of uh, something that is smoked, with candles, etc., etc. Etc. So uh, many people they are not used to what we have in um, in uh, Protestant churches or any other churches. So this is strange to them, and uh, sometimes it is not necessary to put these people directly to our understanding what the right church is, you know, because for us it it is normal, but. Uh, the right church is not only in Protestant form, you know. The right church is not in Orthodox form. The right church is not even in Baptist or Pentecostal form. It is, it is here, you know. It is where uh, we have fellowship with God and it is where we have uh, relations with God. So uh, most, most often we just tell them, look, you, you just have to connect, stay connected with God, you just need to read Bible, and we don't invite them to a church. We don't consider uh, that person, if person is going to the church, he is saved. No, it is, it is, not, uh, it is not necessary. So, yeah, we, we tell them about uh, values and spiritual growth. And then uh, there is a stage where we offer them cooperation. We tell them, look, uh, you have received solution to your needs. Uh, 
now you have some other values. Do, do you want to help others? You know that this solution worked for you. Why don't, why don't you just tell your neighbor, or why don't you tell just, why, why don't you just tell your colleague at work that there is a solution for this kind of problems? Start inviting people, or start telling this, uh, this or that people um, about what, like, share your testimony. And how you can do it? You can either become a member of our NGO, so we literally we invite him to join our NGO, or we invite him to join our movement. And this is how social churches are growing. And uh, sometimes people are just staying in social churches as their activists. So they keep on working with the children, they keep on working with the adults without going to classical church. Sometimes it happens. But most of the time, people are getting so friendly and they understand what is, what, what is it all about. Yeah, what is classical church? So they easily accept the concept of classical church and they, 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 then they transfer to classical church as a church members, as people with a, a set of uh, values, as people who know uh, what is, uh, you know, as people who know proper values or who have proper values. So uh, this was the outreach system, this was the solution, and this was conversion methods. Is it, sorry? This was the outreach methods. I told you that you have to identify your area, then you develop uh, at th then you develop tools how you approach this area. Either you create a community on Facebook and you simply advertise it by paying for, for the adverts, or you just print uh, some handouts and you stand at crowded places and you hand out the invitation to your events, or you just uh, set up, um, I don't know, charitable organization and you do some events where you feed poors, when you just outreach to slums, uh, and the uh, crisis areas of your city where you just make connections and we, where you ask uh, neighborhood or people on the streets what family needs help? Uh, can you show me who needs help? Then you go to that families, you offer your help and then your organization becomes uh, like is fulfilling its uh, purpose or you know based on your area, based on your calling there is a a set of instruments, how you are outreach to, you know, to people. Is it clear? Yeah, so outreach methods, uh, content of uh, solution, and um, conversion methods. Everything is clear, yeah? Yeah, so I, I think I mentioned it already, but Principles of social church. You can just you can just read them. Yeah, it's advertising strategy. By advertising strategy, we <laughs> I used some kind of technical terminology. We receive incoming traffic, so we, we receive incoming people to our organizations. Uh, then we convert incoming traffic through um, methods of conversion and. Uh, in the end of the program, we just invite them to classical church. You will have this slide, so you will be able to uh, to read it. Yeah, but the main thing is again that a social church is a bridge to a classical church. And these are the key directions of a social church that we have at God Embassy. So these are different projects that can be an example of what, you, of what solutions you can develop or what areas you can tackle if you don't have any idea. So, fatherhood center or rehabilitation center. Do you need explanation for what is it? No? No, you, you understand it? University of Life? Is, is another big project uh, started by Pastor Sunday. University of Life uh, is an organization that has published 
I think it's over south or oh, sorry over a hundred books in Russian. Uh, you Anastasia, you you bought eight or f five or six books from University of Life. And what was the the main reason why you bought these books in Russian? <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, so these books, the, the books that were published by University of Life, they are answering particular needs. And they are written in the form of training, where you can take a book and you have a ready training. So you just take a book. It, it, is, it is very similar to books that Pastor writes in English. But... Uh, these books are really very adaptable and easy adaptable um, to become to become a training. So you just <laughs> you just buy a book, you gather crowd, you open a book, and you start a training. This this how it literally works, and this this what people mainly do in University of Life projects and School of Life. So what University of Life is there was. Uh, uh, of, there is over 100 books that were published and people do different projects with these books. Uh, let's say some people, they, they have bought books on family. Uh, there is, I, I think, up to six books on family relations. How to become a good father, how to become a good husband, how to become a good wife, how to become a mother. These are just four titles of, the bo of different books. Then how to bring up your children, how to instill proper values in your children. Uh, w what is the difference between a uh, boy and a man? So all these topics are related to family issues and men and women issues. And people took these books. They have put all these topics into some sequence. And they said, we have uh, courses for families and every week or every time uh, let's say two times a week every time they they go through a chapter of the book in the form of training so people just come like you they have easy fellowship with elements of social repentance where they just uh, explain what is written in these books they don't literally read the book but they work with people identifying their needs and offering solutions based on these books. So a system of trainings. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, yeah, these books are in Russian. But, but Pastor is working hard, sorry. <laughs> but Pastor is working hard to publish uh, first books in English that you can already use uh, as, as a training uh, tutorial. Let's say, not a tutorial, but uh, as a training material. Let's say how to build a secured financial future. Who wouldn't like to attend this training? There is a lot of trainings with similar names in the network. So you just <laughs> go to your country, go to your city, and locally launch this training based, based on that book. Or also a good name for a training, Stop Working for Uncle Sam. How to stop working for Uncle Sam? training in uh, London or Canberra or wherever you are or, or in Pretoria, <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if the abbreviation uh, and you, oh, you probably mentioned that already. Could, could you just repeat that? NGO? NGO, non-government organization. All right, thank you. Yeah, or like charity or... NPOs. NPO, yeah. And what stands for P? Uh, P is a profit. Ah, non-profit organization. Yeah, okay. School of Life is, uh, University of Life is mainly for adults, but School of Life is another branch. As I told you, they work at schools. Uh, they have these topics, uh, let's say, how, how to instill proper values in your children. They take the list of values and they go to schools speaking about values that help teenagers become, you know, become personalities. 
Um, and this whole movement that regularly goes, goes to schools in different regions of Ukraine. And uh, they work on behalf of NGOs. They, they don't work on behalf of uh, church. So they have all accreditation and all access to every school in their region. Secondly, uh, yeah, third uh, point is rehabilitation centers for drugs and alcohol addicted. There should be no explanation because it's clear how it functions. You saw it practically. Then history makers training schools. I think there is no explanation needed because you met Pastor Derek and you know what history makers movement is all about. You know how this one, this particular training changed pers a person's life. And uh, you can start, as Pastor Derek said, that uh, they are appointing directors for countries, for their countries, and, or for, for some regions. And you can become one of them. You can become a, a, a director for History Makers uh, Training School or Academy. And you, you, you will receive all materials that will help, help you run this training. So you will advertise, you will run this training, and you will have a lot of movement in your city. And then we, when you create social councils, social councils is a part of follow-up program that uh, Pastor Derek developed, where they uh, create similar social churches. Uh, secondly, this is marriage anatomy school. Again, I told you a lot about this uh, school. They have a number of topics. They have a, a set of messages. So you just uh, take the book or you just take a recording f or take the program and you start the school in your city. NGOs, uh, institutes. Uh, we have a leader, Pastor, um, Pastor Lilia. Uh, she is pol she's in politics. She, you know, she's a very famous in social, um, social sphere. So she is a head of NGO reformation, let's say. And this NGO reformation uh, is, uh, is a part of social councils under, I think, two or three government uh, organizations. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and the Ministry of Culture and Sports. So she has free access to these ministries. She can go to gatherings, she can go to sessions that uh, are held in these ministries and she can take part in governmental policy on these or that issues. And then political influence is another stage of NGOs where um, pastors, leaders of these movements, uh, let, do you remember, ah, we didn't cover that, but uh, tomorrow there will be uh, a workshop by Pastor Valera Plis, and he will tell his testimony uh, how he became from drug addict a millionaire and the way they train people to become a members of uh, um, local governments or members of parliament etc so heads of these organizations when they achieve a higher level they have a uh, huge influence and they can go to politics you know they at least they if they affected and if they have sold, solved local needs, at least they can uh, run in the campaign to become uh, a local government official or a mayor of their local city. So we had a uh, deputy of mayor, or even he was a mayor for some time in, uh, in Vishnyove. And I mean, he became successful and People voted for him. You know, he was elected as a mayor for some time. Uh, same with the mayor of Kiev. There was a member of, or oh, there is a member of the church now. He is in Georgia, uh, who was elected due to his uh, activity with the church, and he received support from the church, and he was elected as a mayor of Kiev. So this is uh, concerning political influence. And these are more details about fatherhood center concept. Uh, I will not take much time. Uh, I, will, I would rather give it to you for your analysis and consideration. You will find more ideas for, for yourself. So this is fatherhood center. 
I will just explain these slides to you. They are similar. So uh, mission and goal of every project, then who is your target audience? What is the program? Like what do you teach there? What is average duration and uh, what is form of training? How it operates? So like main characteristics for every project for you to understand how it can be accomplished, how it can be run and managed. And fatherhood center goals are also on the next slide. What is this? What, what, what is it designed for? University of Life, general concept, then uh, rehabilitation centers, general concept, Re rehabilitation center steps. And yeah, from these steps, uh, maybe we will talk about this tomorrow on the seminar of Pasta Valera, please. But these are the stages, adaptation, stationary center coordinator, uh, adaptation house coordinator, manager of the branch, leader of rehabilitation center, pastor. And then there is another stage, uh, politician or social or NGO leader, and they go to politics. Okay, history makers trainings concept. Uh, this, uh, this is an example of topics that they usually give on general trainings, general history makers trainings. This is for you to have an idea uh, at least what you can teach them about or you know how to attract people. Marriage anatomy school concept. These are the topics that they usually go through or that they study in the mar marriage anatomy school. Okay, yeah, so uh, this is how it works. Church growth, growth strategy. And again, uh, I want to say that this is my observation of how Embassy of God Church was growing and how it is functioning. 40% in quantity, 40% of social church provide 60% of classical churches with people uh, and they help to solve people's needs and they help to increase numbers and quality uh, and help church to grow. Yeah, because, uh, because I cut this story short, I was able to do it in one hour for you to have a rest. So maybe this, this is kind of <laughs> grace time for you, but really for you to be able to finish your books. And if you have finished reading first book, you may want to start reading second book. Yeah, but you, if you have your questions, I'm ready to answer. Okay, um, I have two questions. So the first one is the rehab center leadership. Mm -hmm. The steps to become a mm -hmm. How um, How do you determine if someone is ready to go to the next step? The question was, how do we determine uh, if person is ready? Yeah, I'm translating. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, the question was, how do you determine if a person is ready to go to a next stage in, let's say, a uh, system of, uh, in the system of rehabilitation? Uh, there is a particular time uh, designed for every stage. So for... Uh, for let's say for the, for the first stage, for quarantine stage, or for stationary stage, there is a time from three to six months. So it takes person three to six months to at least to at least change something in his uh, behavior, to change something in his to to deal with his uh, addiction. So uh, people are not changing so so quickly, you know. So it, it may take from three to six months for a person at least to withdraw from uh, his addiction, for, for, for him to, you know, to begin to understand what is his purpose and mission in life and to gain some spiritual growth. This is stage number one. And when rehabilitation center leader, because 
rehabilitation center cannot exist without leaders. And leader is the one who knows and understands every process in this rehabilitation center. And he can tell by observing rehabilitant, he can tell whether he is ready or not to move to the next stage. If person is spiritually mature, mature let's say it was, an, uh, it was a drug addict, yeah, uh, who never heard about Christ. He just comes to a rehabilitation center and he doesn't know what is, what is a church, what is God, how to pray God. So he's just, for the first, I would say, three months, usually, he's just withdrawing. He's just, um, you know, finding his peace, finding his place, uh, begins to understand where he is, what he is, what, what for is here, what is his purpose at, at this place, etc. Then the next stage is when he becomes spiritually mature, when he begins to pray, when he uh, is independent in leading his, uh, you know, personal prayer. Because sometimes uh, there are people who need to be motivated to spend time with God, to read Bible. But when they do it after two or three months in the group of people, they are already in the environment that helps them to get this change. So after three months, from three to six months, uh, they see, okay, this person is spiritually stable. Then the next stage is when he becomes spiritually mature. Mature. Then the next stage is when he takes more responsibility for taking more, uh, more responsibilities around uh, the rehabilitation center. Or they send him to do some work, some easy work, uh, then some harder work. And when he becomes uh, skillful, when he becomes skillful, he can take responsibility over his life. He is uh, gaining some money, he is earning some money, and he can pay for his uh, accommodation, he can pay for his life, he can save some money, and he is prepared for a next stage, which is adaptation. Adaptation. And at this stage, so this is, uh, this is let's say, first stage from three to six months, where a person just stays at the rehabilitation center and he doesn't con he is not contacting the external world but this stage adaptation is when person is skillful and his leader and supervisor sees that okay he can go he doesn't have any problems with his uh, previous addictions and he can easily go to you know contact the world he can easily go to do some work in the city so they send him out to the city and he does some work and comes back to adaptation apartment. So this is a, a different place. A rehabilitation center can be in the village, but adaptation apartment can be in the city. And then next stage is stationary mentor. So when he is successful at the adaptation stage, uh, uh, rehab center leader, he sees, okay, person is stable. He is able to take responsibility. Uh, he works hard, he is independent, and if this person is willing to help others, he can become stationary mentor, you know, the, the coach for, for those who are still here. This is stationary stage. So this person becomes uh, a head or supervisor of this stage. Then uh, mentor is not, is not a coordinator, it's just one of those who helps people to go through the process of withdrawal, to go through the process of uh, spiritual growth, etc. But then if a rehabilitation center leader understands that this guy is ready to coordinate whole, like the generally coordinate the rehabilitation center, he appoints him as rehabilitation center leader, where he is responsible not only for um, rehabilitants, but he is responsible for running a uh, whole rehabilitation center with all finances, with all co contracts, with all jobs that they are doing, with all processes like provision, etc. So at this stage, the person becomes coordinator of this whole process. The next stage is adaptation house. It's similar to this. So stationary coordinator, he coordinates, sorry, this process completely but adaptation house coordinator he uh, he coordinates this process so he is the leader here 
next stage is manager of the branch. When senior, when pastor, who is here, who is uh, like pastor of the branch of rehabilitation, when he sees that, okay, these guys, they have some, they do business, they have some construction work, uh, etc. They have like small businesses. Um, if senior pastor sees that, okay, this guy is faithful, uh, he can manage people, then he appoints him ahead, or this guy is becoming ahead of business that he was running. Let's say, you remember that big guy, Vitali, yeah. from Fatherhood Center. So he didn't have any skills, but he was able to train himself to do construction work. And he was able to train others. So he raised his team. And now Pastor Valera, please, who is the senior pastor to him, he says, okay, you can become re responsible for the, uh, for the business line, for the construction business uh, in our rehabilitation center. You do what you want to do. You just, you know, we, we trust you. We know that you can handle it. And he becomes a manager of the branch, uh, business branch. And then, like, everything is built on reports, everything is built on results. And if a person has results, he's a, he has an opportunity to grow. Then leader of rehabilitation center, and then a pastor. So everything has criteria. And one of the criteria is time that person dedicates to this process. Second criteria is uh, fruits. Third criteria is persistence. If person falls back and then comes again, they will not allow him to take a uh, higher position because they're not confident. They, uh, I mean, yeah, not, not reliable. So when person is stable, when person uh, dedicated some time to the rehabilitation process, uh, it, by the way, time is very important because uh, somebody may think, oh, I've got freedom, I can do everything. But uh, persistence develops moral strength. And when a person is morally strong, he will never come back to drugs or alcohol anymore. B but it doesn't come in, in a short period of time. So time, persistence, results, personal growth, and growth in other areas proves that person is ready to take a higher stage. Or if person decides, okay, I received freedom, let's say, <coughs> let's say here, on adaptation stage. If person doesn't want to continue in this, um, in this, um, how to say it? Sorry? In this system or in this concept in rehabilitation, uh, let's say person was, I don't know, a politician, but he had problem with drugs. He successfully graduated, went through these stages. At the adaptation stage, his leader said, okay, you are free to, to do whatever you want to do. And person says, okay, I'm going back to my realm, to, to politics. So, or he's going back to, I don't know, to doing what he was doing, like he was an engineer or business, yeah. So nobody is forced to become a pastor, but uh, there is a way, uh, at, at least uh, the idea of rehabilitation center is for people to see what they can achieve. And this is not only slides. There are real examples like Vitali, the big guy, like Pastor Valera who, ha who became a millionaire uh, in, uh, I, think, I think it's two or three years after he came to rehabilitation center from drug addict. So they see the way that they can achieve and they, this motivates them for persistence for other achievements and to stay in that rehabilitation center until they get real results. Yeah. Uh, ah, you, you still have a question? Okay, please, sorry. It's just, uh, just two short questions. So one, one is, um, do you ever had issues with, um, with, with promoting people because they didn't have academic backgrounds to do these things and like with the law and with the government mm -hmm. and then the other thing is do you have any contacts for to replicate this in other countries like who's the best person to contact for this 
Okay, you should have uh, visited uh, Fatherhood Center then, <laughs> because uh, these questions were asked at uh, Fatherhood Center. But I will tell you, um, first question was uh, about issues with promotion. Yeah, the first question was with issues with promotion. So at this stage, at the stage of uh, stationary mentor, people are encouraged to go to get a higher education, those who don't have it. <coughs> Let's say Vitaly, you remember what Vitaly mentioned yes, yesterday, or it was on Monday, yeah, that he goes to study law. And uh, he was encouraged by his senior pastor or by his leader to go to study law because he, it was not a problem of promotion, but he understood with his mind that to advance in life, he needs education. He needs knowledge. He needs some other courses. And this is choice for, for everyone individually. Either he wants to go for uh, politics, he goes to, like, to political science. If he wants to do business, he goes for business courses. And he, this guy, he said, uh, study law was my uh, dream from my youth, from my childhood. So he's just uh, accomplishing his dream. Uh, of going to study, of going for a law faculty. So, um, yeah, and if there is a problem of promotion, um, people are encouraged uh, in advance. From the first stage, from the ground stage, they are encouraged to go for educational courses. And I didn't, I didn't went deep into details because this is not my topic. I am just telling you the general structure. But uh, they encourage people to go, like, one of the criteria, even on these stages, even on these stages, is to become a home, uh, is to become a home group leader or to go for HMT, to attend a, a set of HMTs with Pastor Sunday because they know that HMT is a transforming thing. Uh, uh, there is a, also a criteria, a criteria to, uh, to complete uh, assignment on leadership schools. We had up to four or five leadership schools that are available on the internet and people are challenged to complete the assignments on these leadership schools. Um, one of the assignments uh, partic in particular for leadership school number one is to answer uh, life important questions. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going to? What am I going to do to make this uh, results or to make my plans achievable. So they are, uh, they are motivated to go into system of training. And self-education is a key element of every uh, rehabilitation process, in, uh, of every rehabilitation center in the rehabilitation process. So self-education is must have for everything. That is why they either, either see their need of uh, going for education but okay I don't want to take this uh, too long and second question was for uh, yeah who to contact uh, you can contact either through us we will direct you to a, to a best person so you can send your request to guest at God Embassy and uh, yeah if you're watching us online and if you if you want to know who to contact if you want to set up either rehabilitation center based on the model of God Embassy Church or if you want to launch any of these social projects that God Embassy Church is running, you just can write, send us an email to guest at godembassy.org and we will guide you to the right person who has experience and expertise in doing that. So just contact us and we will direct you to the right person. Yeah. You had a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Do I have to stand up? Or no, no. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the difference between Pastor Sunday's English-speaking books? Because mm -hmm. I heard you say University of Life books, uh, courses, I think you said. So what, is there a difference in writing? What makes that a course and maybe the English-speaking? OK, so Russian-speaking books are different from English-speaking books in uh, in the manner of, or in the concept, concept of writing. Most of Russian, Russian books 
were written uh, based on a particular structure. And every writer had a structure. Every editor who was editing a book, he w his assignment was to put this book to a structure. So he, he, they took a teaching of Pastor Sunday, let's say on, on family relations, and they structured it in a way that it is logical and you can build training based on this teaching. So it is not, not, it is not like, a, you know, it's not, it's not like a poem, but is a, is a tool or instruction how to solve your need, step by step. When need is, is eliminated or highlighted, explained, then uh, tools or solutions are offered, and then tools are uh, proposed on how to solve your uh, or that, that particular problem that is tackled in the book. So they are more structural. This is the difference. There was a question over there. Yeah. My, um, it's a remark and a question as well. And it is in the area of um, the relevance of the local church, of the classical church. And I know that we, um, I mean, majority of the church at the moment is living in or is in a state of ignorance mm -hmm. and um and we get that from the testimony of people who've come out of churches or you know people who visited churches or are in churches mm -hmm. and we understand that there's still a lot of ignorance in the church nevertheless the local church still remains relevant and you're talking about the social church and the classical church and some of us we are doing we're carrying out projects mm -hmm. that are independent of the church. How do we link this project with the church? Because at the end of the day, these people we are working with, we're providing good works, but we understand that this good works is not what is going to save these people mm -hmm. when it comes to salvation of the soul. So there's got to be a link between what we're doing. Say, for example, I am working with youth, for example, and my project is independent of the church. And perhaps my project is something to do with school of life. Now, how do I link that with the church to make sure that these youths don't only understand the values of life, but they also get saved? Because it's not enough to just understand the values of life at the end of the day, you only make it to eternity if you surrender to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So how do we link our project with the local church? I want to repeat myself that salvation is not only in classical church. So you can get people saved even in social churches. Right. And we have uh, a number of testimonies to that. Uh, this is number one. Secondly, definitely, the, there is, there is, uh, we need a transformation uh, or change of mindset in classical churches. And I, I believe if they can make it on Friday, uh, I will invite people who have, who, have, who have a wonderful story. Maybe you, know, maybe you know them, Pastor Christina, or maybe not. So... Uh, I will. I don't want to tell her story, but in a nutshell, I will tell it. I will tell it just in a nutshell. She was a pastor of classical church. She came to history makers trainings with Pastor Sunday, and she realized that the way she was taught or she understood classical church should be operating is wrong, and she said okay, we are not growing in uh, numbers in our classical church with the way we used to do our classical church, which is praise and worship, which is, uh, you know, like ordinary message, which is tithes and offerings. And she said to membership of the church, guys, let us close down the church. And I want us to start it in, a, in an absolutely new way. We are starting it uh, as a social church. So 
and we let us forget the name or the, the, the word church. And they began to call their meetings uh, Sunday meeting. So they changed, even they changed even vocabulary. And they were inviting people from the world to Sunday meetings. Sunday meetings dedicated to different topics: uh, financial freedom, successful marriage, uh, growing up children, uh, success, uh, like successful family, or how to succeed in life, how to find your calling, etc. So they were advertising these topics alone, and they were saying, "Come to our Sunday meetings." People were coming to Sunday meetings. They were telling uh, courses. They were telling topics based on University of Life books. Very simple. They didn't invent something uh, supernatural in their head. They just took a book. Uh, the book uh, in Russian is, is there is equivalent in Russian of Who Am I? So they, they took Who Am I book. They took one topic, one chapter, and they made uh, a training, or not a training, they made, made a material for one Sunday meeting. So they invited people to this Sunday meeting. And they were showing pictures how they were growing. So the first meeting, there were 35 people. On second meeting, Sunday meeting, there were 60 people from the world. And this has increased the amount of people in their classical church that they were building for over two years. So she was building a classical church for two years, and she had 50 people in the church. But once they started doing church in a new way, just for the second week, they had 60 people. She said, oh, like, why? What's wrong? I mean, uh, why, don't, why haven't we done it before? So they increased their influence um, in numbers and they are connected with these people and these people it became uh, it became uh, as a club you know people are coming let's say they have special meetings for women and they have I think up to 60 women regularly attending their meetings compared to two years of classical church with 50 members in just few months they reached uh, and they keep on reaching 60 women every like every time when they announce uh, an event and they don't need to be you know to be saved uh, or they don't need to be brought to a classical church to be saved yeah. but we had the last HMT she brought one person uh, who testified that she was an Orthodox and she began to attend these meetings. And she just received values from these people. And these values help, help, helped her to open eyes on Christianity in general. And she says, <clears throat> I understood that there is salvation in Orthodox Church. And there is salvation in this kind of church. But uh, it is not necessary to go to either Orthodox or uh, Protestant church to be saved. This is what person said uh, who, who just began to attend these meetings and she realized, oh, these values are really helping me. My life is changed. Uh, I'm converted. She said, I was converted. I stopped doing what I was doing wrong and I started doing what is right from the perspective of God's word, from the pers perspective of kingdom values. Isn't that uh, repentance which is turning back so this this is very philosophical and sometimes it is very far from our um, classical understanding of salvation or the way we used to think and some people may immediately say or impulsively they may say it is wrong it shouldn't be so but if you look deeper when person when person's lives life was changed when he stopped or when he or she stopped doing what she was doing wrong and she lives in accordance to values that she received uh, through people who know Christ, we transferred her these values. And she says, 
I see Christ in these people. I want to imitate them. Although she has never, although she has never been put to our, ch like brought to a God Embassy Church first, you know, that was not her starting point. And she said later, 10 or 15 years ago, I used to attend God Embassy Church, but I've been there for two times and I didn't like it. And I, and I just stopped going to God Embassy Church 15 years ago. But she says, but now I came to this church because this church is manifesting Christ, but in another way. So this could be an answer to your question on how to, you know, there, is, there, there, there should be just another way. Yeah. Again, um, I would rather listen to those people who did it. And there will be pastor, tomorrow we will have Pastor Valera, please, uh, who did the whole rehabilitation and the social churches, and they have anatomy of marriage school. I am just, you know, I am just chronologist. I'm, I was just observing. And uh, with my analytic, analytical mind, I was able to put it all together to, to show this um, uh, angle of view, yes, thank you, or to show this uh, perspective. Uh, how do I see this whole process? Because I realized that some people were not getting the whole picture. Uh, any questions? On that school of life that I can lay my hands on. Yeah, you just write me okay. and I will give you a contact to this person. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Someone asked online if you could explain a little bit more about Fatherhood Center. I don't think they understand the concept of Fatherhood Center. They've been there on Monday. No, no. online. Someone asked online. Uh -huh. Online. Yeah. For, for those online. who are watching us online, yeah. Uh, the concept of fatherhood center is a kind of rehabilitation center, but specially designed for... Можно включить свет. So fatherhood center is, uh, is a rehabilitation center specially designed for, for those men who want to find their way in life. Let's say someone has went through a rehabilitation center and a fatherhood center could become an adaptation stage where a person comes and he wants to have more personal growth, more professional growth, and more spiritual growth. This is a place where uh, you will, where the one who comes, he will be surrounded with men who can show by example how to succeed in life how to go from stage zero to higher stages in life, how to take more responsibility, and uh, how to become professionally uh, successful. Let's say they do construction work. They, they, start, they start with simple things. Uh, first, they do construction work with their own hands. Then they get uh, people trained, they get team trained, and then they start a bigger scale business uh, where they're just looking for orders and then they send people for uh, construction sites and you know the whole groups of people are doing businesses uh, earning money to provide their own needs and needs of rehabilitation center so uh, fatherhood center is a place where they teach responsibility where they teach uh, manhood where they grow up fatherhood or brotherhood relations so this is kind of a rehabilitation center for those who want to become real men or those who want to know what a real manhood or fatherhood is. That's it. Yeah, but we have, for, we have a documentary about fatherhood center that you can find on Pastor Sunday's YouTube channel, which is uh, Pastor Sunday uh, official. That is Pastor Sunday's YouTube channel. You go to documentaries section and you type fatherhood center and you will f you will see a documentary about fatherhood center where you will get more details mm -hmm. yeah so thank you for your attention